Hello! Today we're going to take a look at a very common scenario in SharePoint. Approvals. There are all kinds of approval systems that we need to do. And in SharePoint, there isn't an out-of-the-box way to do that simply. So I'm going to show you how you can format fields so that you can demonstrate approvals and have it allow conditionally for designated approvers to click a button to approve or decline approval in any kind of a situation. So now, let's get SharePoint Smart. All right, so we'll just jump right to it. This is a dashboard app going to demonstrate some of the concepts that I'll be going through in our video. I will have links to these templates below the video, so you can just click on those to check it out for yourself. The concept we're going for is where we've got multiple approvers that need to perhaps approve a document or approve a project or something tied to a SharePoint list record. And there's two components to this. There is an approval summary, which you see in the box. In my case, I've got five approvers. And then the other is actual approval buttons, which would be available to the designated approver. So you can see I've got five slots, and I have a designated approver um, for each of those five slots. So I'm going to come over to SharePoint dashboards and this template is linked below the video. So let's start by looking at that. Now you can use just the approval buttons if you want, or you could use those along with the approval summary, or even that can be used on its own. That's up to you, but I'm going to be showing both concepts together since the approval buttons were designed to complement that um, template. All right, so when you first come in here, what I would recommend, you can check out some different options. Your buttons are configurable. You can change the colors. You can change the icons on the button. You can set that up to look however you want. The key concept here is that the approval buttons only appear to the person who is designated as the approver. So you can see in the preview, it tells you the approval will see these buttons everybody else just sees the status of that approval. You can even try it out in the preview window. If you click on the buttons, you'll see what it looks like. Once the approver has approved, it's going to go ahead and show the status, and then they have a little button here in case they need to reset that for any reason. Um, but the other users, of course, are not going to be able to change that approval status. If I do a decline, then we have a decline approval status. You can also change the wording. Maybe you want to have slightly different wording. Maybe you want to put reject instead of decline or something like that. That's configurable in the approved text and decline text field. So you've got a lot of flexibility and options for that. You will need to designate two field names. You need to provide the name of the approval field, which you'll apply this template on and then the name of the approver field. So let's walk through those steps first just to get you going. So I have a status field. This is a choice field in SharePoint and I've already formatted it. Let me take that off just so you can see the step. So um, this is nothing more than a standard choice field. It's got three values in it which are pending, approved, or declined. You can see those instructions in the blue notes area. It will tell you to make sure you include those values. Okay, so I need to come into the template tool and just simply say my approval field in this case is called approval one and the approver who is allowed to make use of that is approver one. And I just need to enter those two names and then I'm ready to hit copy, follow the instructions in the pop-up box, and then I can come over to my choice field in SharePoint, column settings, format the column, advanced mode, and then replace the code in the window and hit save. There we go. All right, so let's look at the interface. Um, so 
Because I am the designated approver, I see those approval buttons. But notice in other situations where it's designated to another user, I do not have the ability to control that. Okay, so you're gonna see a pending um, status if nothing's been done, if you're not the approver. Okay, so I can go in here and hit approve, and then I can reset that if I want to. Okay, now the other part of this is this approval summary field. That's covered in another video. I'll link that also below this one if you want to get into the configuration and learn how to have that approval summary, if you want to use that in addition to these approval buttons. Um, so another thing that you're going to need to make sure that you do if you want to use the approval buttons, you do need to go into the form, click on the title field and go to the um, side panel form. You're going to want to edit the columns. And for these buttons, we need to hide the approval buttons. Um, this template um, doesn't work the way that you would want it to if those fields are shown. In order to get that functionality where we're blocking the ability to approve for other users, you just need to hide those. So that's really easy. You can come into the setting and simply um, uncheck those fields to hide them. And that makes it so that when uh, an approval is put in, you're just going to put in the names of the approvers in the form. So all the approvals are going to take place from the dashboard view. And then you can have a nice roll up summary that's going to display for you. And then naturally, if I need to change that, I can, you know, change the approver. So just to demonstrate that, um, let's go ahead and change the approver one to another user just to see the effect of that. There we go. And I'll do a refresh. Okay, now that's already got a value in the field, so um, you know I need to I need to be able to reset that. Let's do a new um, record. I'm gonna do um, I like to do food dummy records, so I'm gonna do French fries project and we'll do different names in here just so you can see how that works so I'll do my name and then I'm going to do some different names just to show the difference that's all you got to put in there And then if we go down here, you're going to see I've got the buttons, um, you know, where it's just going to be me. And for the other ones, we're not going to see that. So that's all there is to it. If you want to do this uh, type of system, this is a template that's included in SharePointDashboards.com. Additionally, there is a approval summary template, uh, and that will be linked under the video as well. If you have not used SharePoint dashboards before, you can go in here and do a free sign up. And if you do that, you get 21 templates for free. Uh, if you go on and get a subscription, that includes all of the templates. As of this video, we're at 161 templates. Lots and lots of cool things you can do to create awesome SharePoint dashboards. So I hope you'll go in to do that and get yourself started with the free templates and then you can go on from there. So that was just demonstrating something we've got to do a lot in SharePoint and that's doing approvals. This shows you a system that's dynamic where you can have buttons that are very easy to use that are controlled. They dynamically will display according to whether you are or are not the approver. Other users are going to see the status it allows for the ability to reset the approval by the designated approver, and you can have a sequential or concurrent approval process. As you can see in this example, we had multiple approvers. Additional to that, we have this approval summary template, which you can display on that same list view, which gives us a nice rolled up summary of all of those approvers. This can handle for any number of approvers. So whether you've got a simple system that just needs one or two approvers, or you've got something really in depth, you can have as many as 10 approvers all in the same record. 
This can be used both with SharePoint lists and also with SharePoint libraries by adding fields to your library. So um, this is a great way for you to have a interactive approval process that's very simple to use. Hope you found that um, interesting and good luck.